Hello everybody, I am Ashley Fields with Yard Us, and today we are going to be painting our uh, Mer Merry Christmas truck and buffalo plaid. I'm so glad that everybody's gonna be here with me today. This is impromptu, so I don't expect, you know, uh, quite the crowd, uh, but I wanted to go ahead and get this going so that you guys have the opportunity uh, to do the truck and buffalo plaid if you guys are wanting to. So I already have my truck taped off. Hello! I did a little pre-work before I came on and I've already taped off my truck so that I can get my buffalo plaid started. Y'all, we sell this blank at yardarus.com. Your blank is a lot smaller um, than this size. This size is, it happens to be the size that I sell at the store. So uh, it's the size I have on hand. So it's what we're gonna be using today. So this version I'm using is a lot bigger than the blank that we sell. All right, y'all, first I started off with um, our horizontal stripes. I'm using, this is Amazon Choice Painter's Tape. It's 1.81 inches wide, or you could type in, you know, two inch wide painter's tape on Amazon. I, I, I've been using the Amazon brand the last few weeks and I really like it, I think it's great. Uh, so I kind of started right below here where our uh, tree is in the back of our truck. And that was my first horizontal line that I put down. And then from there, I used spacers to create all the rest of my horizontal lines. Hey Taylor, how are you doing, hun? All right, y'all, we are going to get a little bit of black and a paper plate. Um, I did this, I've done this version now s several times for customers that you know I've painted for sale, uh, but I know I haven't shown you guys this. I'm using a two inch chip brush. This is a really old one. I did just get a little bit of water in here just on the, the tips of my brush, not too much. Um, if you use too much water when you're doing a dry brush, you're gonna see a lot of bleeding underneath your tape. So we don't wanna do the bleeding under the tape. So kind of loading up the edge of that. And wherever, if my, my stripes are horizontal, I'm gonna do horizontal movements. If my stripes are vertical, I'm gonna do vertical movements. So obviously we're doing horizontal right now. So I'm just sticking with nice horizontal movements. Um, I have done this truck, like I said, I've done some before to sell and I kind of try to get it on the light side. I don't want it too dark. Um, I do want some, a little bit of red showing through and uh, that's because whenever I come back over top and I do my verticals, I really like having um, the intersection of my, my lines to be dark. So therefore, I try to do my stripes a little bit lighter, not too much paint, and then those intersections come out perfectly black. This almost, even though I'm using black, I'm using regular black, I think it's number 37, um, it honestly will come out looking a little bit lighter almost like a um, shading red, just because I'm not putting too much down on here. Okay, so I'm sticking with that same stripe going all the way across once I get it kind of filled in the way I want it. Another thing is that I have done that I didn't care for is whenever you're doing your stripes, you need to make sure that up against your tape, you're getting enough paint all the way up against that tape. Because if you don't, then when you pull it up, you're gonna see some kind of spots that are left that you don't have straight lines on. Hey Debbie, hey Wendy, how are you guys? Doing just a quick little buffalo plaid. Um, I was started telling everybody as soon as we hopped on, uh, this, this is the same version of the blank that you guys have, but this is a bigger version. It's one of the ones that I actually sell. So um, I have a little extra tape here, like on my little headlight and my window. I put down some tape just to keep it clean. Traditionally, if I'm doing anything with plaid, I do not base coat before I do my plaid. Uh, but for the sake of a live, it just made sense to go ahead and have it ready, already base coated. And then, you know, just kind of tape over those areas so that I make sure and keep them nice and clean for going off here. My daughter should be home from school here in a little bit. So got my reminders. Uh, all right, y'all. So I'm just sticking with the same motion I have uh, horizontal stripes right now, so I'm making horizontal movements. I know y'all guys can't see the whole thing at once, but this is black I'm using. And you see how I'm trying, I'm purposely, purposefully making it almost see-through, okay? 
I'm do I like that look. It's gonna come out the, the way I'm wanting it to come out by just doing it real, real light, okay? Um, once you come back with your vertical stripes, it will darken more. So don't be afraid. You know, if you're looking at this going, okay, I don't know, that's a little bit light. It, you want it like that. And you'll see once we get done with this why we left it just like that. Okay, so this is just regular black, a two inch chip brush. I did dip the tip of my brush maybe a quarter inch far down into some water just to kind of, you know, give it a base to kind of get started with. Not very much, you don't want too much water. You use too much water, it's gonna bleed underneath your tape. Nobody wants that, that's never fun. All right, y'all, it is, uh, it is oh, cold. It's cold here in Texas. <laughs> Our cold is probably not the same as people up north. So like right now it's 60 degrees in my workshop. But when you're outside all day, uh, you know, that 60 degrees, it's kind of cold. So you guys are seeing me all dressed up. I got multiple shirts on and a hoodie and nice thick pants. Uh, yeah, so it's a little chilly here for us. I'm just peeling off that tape, y'all. This tape that's still left right here on my window, this on my tree, and then on my headlight, I only left that on there so that I did not get those colors dirty with the dry brush. That's the only reason. Um, if you guys are, are attempting to do a plaid, anything, I say to do the plaid first and then come in and do your uh, base coating. Like I said, the sake of a life, you know, I kind of got to have things a little bit more prepared. So I am going to leave that tape, obviously, on uh, the window, the headlight, and the tree until we get our plaid finished, and then I'll take that tape off. All right. Now, y'all, you could reuse this tape. I don't, I mean, to me, it's just whatever, grab some more, but you're, you could totally reuse it. Okay, so now we have our horizontal stripes. Now, for the sake of a live, I'm going to have to blow dry this uh, to get it to dry because anytime you're doing plaid and you're using tape, your, your layers have to be dry before you can do your next layer. So, hey, Teresa, Jane, Selma, D, how are you guys doing? I hope everybody's doing well. This won't take too long to get dry because I put it on so light it's not going to have a lot of real thick spots. Now, it might just take me a, a couple of minutes here because I do want to make sure, like I said, before I put more tape down, that everything underneath where I'm going to tape is dry. So, hey, Dolores. Hey, Don. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Dee. I'm so glad you're here, hon. Hope you're doing good. I know you've been working on lots of paint projects and your gingerbread people. They're so cute. I love seeing all of your photos. Also, while I'm sitting here thinking about it, I purchased this brush at um, Ace Hardware, I don't know, months ago. It is a uh, Magnolia Home, so Joanna Gaines, it is her brand. And it's a, basically a huge chip brush. This says, uh, it doesn't say the size. I don't know, I'm gonna say that's at least a two inch brush. This would also be another good one to use for dry brushing. But I also am going to, uh, I think, I, I can't make up my mind, but we might attempt to put some snow on here uh, with this brush after we finish it. And the only reason I'm kind of hesitant to do that is because after I finish the plaid and I come over top and I put something on top of it, if I don't like it, it's going to really ruin all the plaid underneath. And yes, I could do touch-ups, but then you would be able to see the touch-up. So I haven't 100% made up my mind but this brush can do some really beautiful snow on top of stuff. And it can also be used for the dry brushing. So I kinda, it's been hanging up on my wall over here. Like I purchased it and just never thought to actually pull it out and use it. Hey Lupe, how are you, hon? Jennifer, Greg, and Susie, I'm so glad y'all are popping in. I know it's kind of a weird time of day. We usually go live later, later at night at like seven. Um, but this was not on the schedule. And I am about to head out of town on Tuesday, and we're gonna be out of town for a week. So I'm trying to kind of hop in and get y'all some, get y'all some tutorials before um, I'm not around for a little bit. So, okay, now our horizontal stripes are, are dry. All this is is black paint is what I did my horizontal stripes with. 
So I'm gonna do my vertical the same way, but first I'm gonna obviously have to take my truck off. Now, again, this truck is bigger than the blank. Your truck is a little bit smaller. This version is, I wanna say it's three feet tall and like 40 inches wide. So now I'm gonna start right here on the back of kind of the cab of the truck. And this is where I'm gonna do my straight line all the way down and then I'll feather them out both directions from there. Um, I like to start at a, uh, at a point on the pattern that I feel like is a good uh, straight line and then work my way from there. I have done this pattern where I taped on the end and I went all the way across and it kind of came out, uh, it started to kind of turn diagonal a little bit. So I prefer to almost start in the middle just to make sure that my lines are nice and straight. So again, this is Amazon's brand uh, painter's tape. If you're on Amazon, you're a shopper on Amazon, um, I, I was purchasing, you know, scotch tape and frog tape. I've used it all, guys. I've used it all. But I've been going through like a, a five pack of tape in a couple of weeks. And so, obviously, I was looking for an option that's not as expensive. And so, I got the Amazon brand. And I really, really love it in comparison to scotch and frog tape. I, I think it stands up just as well. And I like that when I pull it up, it's not difficult to pull up. It goes down pretty smooth and it comes up pretty smooth. And so for me, it was a great option. This size is 1.81 inches. You could type in two inch painter tape. Um, I also have tape that's, that's a little bit smaller, like one and a quarter inch. But for me, I wanted kind of the thicker stripes. Now you guys, if y'all wanted to do the Buffalo plaid on a blank, you might want to use a smaller width because your truck isn't as big as this one. Like I said, this one's three feet tall and um, about three and a half feet wide, just short of four feet wide. So it's just what I happen to have on hand. And I wish I had a plaid truck here to show y'all, but they're all at the store. Uh, so I don't have a sample with me, but you guys will see the sample when we get done. Oh no, uh, I had some wet, wet paint somewhere. I hope I don't make any more boo-boos, y'all. I was able to kind of clean it up. I smeared it across that red, but I got it cleaned up. So just keep it on. I'm using a kind of a trash piece in between as a spacer just to make sure that all of my lines are the same width apart. So you guys are seeing me put down that trash piece, that spacer, kind of pull it up, and then I reuse it. So now I did the front half of my truck. I'm gonna pull it around and do the back half, okay? Put my spacer down. Grab a new piece of tape. Let's see. It's a little harder at this angle. Okay, and then again, I reuse that spacer over and over and over. So really, you keep that same trash piece just keep reusing it and it has a little bit less waste okay almost done um i have uh, like i said i have painted several of these and the customers have loved them i have painted i paint i think i started off with like 10 plaid and and um i don't know 12 plain ones and I've sold several plaid, and I haven't sold a plain one since I've had the plaid out. So uh, if that tells you guys anything, I think a lot of people are really liking plaid right now. I, I don't know, some of you guys kind of know me, and y'all know the whole inside of my house is buffalo plaid for Christmas. So for me, it's just something I love. Something that, you know, I'll spend my money on is buffalo plaid. Uh, so those of you that are maybe painting and doing paint parties, or you're going to craft shows or making these for friends and family, this would be a perfect one because a lot of people like the plaid. Okay, y'all, all of my stripes are ready now. I can go ahead and dry brush. I'm going to, for the sake of keeping my tree clean, I'm gonna just throw down a piece of tape right here just to ensure that my tree does not get messed up. Again, those of you who are gonna do a buffalo plaid, anything at your house, do not base coat it until your buffalo plaid is done. 
Hey, Mom. Hey, Paula. Hey, Karen. Hope y'all are good. All right, y'all. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm gonna just go ahead and use this this uh, Magnolia Homes brush uh, for my plaid. I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see if it works. Actually, I need to dip just a little tiny tip of it in, in some water. I think it'll work just fine. Uh, but I, I kind of was playing around with this brush the other day for snow and I was loving it. All right, y'all, we're doing vertical now, so my movements are gonna be vertical. Oh, I like this brush. It gives you a lot of coverage very quickly. Huh, I like that a lot, y'all. I, you know, anything Joanna gains, I always feel like I know she's not gonna put out a cheap product, right? So I thought I'd, I'd just try it out and turns out y'all, I love her brushes. I think they're great. I happened to pick this one up at Ace in Pearland. Uh, honestly, it was a few months ago. And um, I'm really liking that coverage I'm getting from it. Again, just like I did on those vertical stripes, I'm doing this very light. I, I'm not trying to make it really dark where you can't see through it. I want you to be able to kind of see through it a bit. I'm using black, but it's almost coming out like it is uh, shading red. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'll show you guys why here in a minute when I can get my tape off. Make sure you're butting up to the corners of your tape as well so that your lines look nice and crisp and they don't look like they're missing once you take that tape up. Turn it around. I'm trying to keep it in the camera view a little bit. Get a little bit more. Brush is getting kind of dried out already. Okay. Y'all, I think this is it. You're about to see my favorite time whenever we do plaid, ripping up the last layers of tape and just looking at it. I absolutely am obsessed with Buffalo plaid. It's just my favorite. doing these corners right here typically I probably wouldn't worry about that but on the buffalo plaid I'm not gonna do shading around the truck on the perimeter of the truck I'm leaving it the buffalo plaid I'm spending all that time doing the plaid that's the main focal point of this truck and I don't want to take it away take anything away from that as I'm finishing it out so now we can start pulling off that tape I can even go ahead and take that tape off my headlight because that was just to keep my headlight nice and clean okay Oh, I need to bring a trash can over here because I never have one over here and I'm always making a bunch of trash. Turn it. I want you guys to be able to see. is all just to keep I just had it on here to keep those colors from getting dirty uh, from my dry brushing so let me get this off I used a, um, a box cutter after I put that tape on here to kind of cut them down in those lines so it doesn't really leave me a grip on there to kind of get it off got a little bit of wet, wet tape on there last little piece okay now let's take a look at the buffalo look so far okay so there's kind of beginning stages if you look up close that black is almost see-through right i kind of did it like opaque and that way, whatever our black had the intersecting lines, those squares come out a little bit darker. So black and a chip brush is all I did, y'all, and tape, obviously. So there's kind of that look for the buffalo plaid, all right? 
I'm gonna just dry it just a little bit right here along the edge and we're gonna work on our tree for just a few minutes. I just don't want to disturb any of the paint from the plaid. I love the lines and the strokes in the lines. So I don't want to disturb that or smear it. I want it to dry with those strokey lines. So kind of clean it up just for a second and right around where we're going to be working. All right. Now, we are going to do um, some dry brushing on this Christmas tree back here. I'm trying to remember, um, hmm, it's kind of hard to remember how I did this because I did, I want to say I put a couple different colors up here. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, trying to think, trying to think, y'all. All right, I want to say I did a little bit of Christmas green, a little bit of dark green, or this might be called shading green or dark green, I'm not sure which. And that Christmas green, I did add a little bit of dark, but I kind of want, because my base is Christmas green, okay? So I got Christmas green right here. That's the base. I added a little bit of dark green to it because I kind of want a two-tone green shading, all right? So I have my dark green as a shader, but I'm also kind of mixing a little bit of Christmas green and dark green just to give me something a little more in between. Hey, Deborah, how are you? Hey, Shane. I'm glad y'all are able to hop in and join me. Y'all, this was the chip brush I used on my horizontal stripes. So I'm going to shake out that excess water, but it does have a little bit of water in here. So on this, I don't really feel like there's a right or wrong into it as far as what color to start with or where to start. One thing that I did do is I kind of am watching these branches, right? So they're kind of coming out and flowing outward, kind of flowing out that way. And that's all I was really trying to do with my strokes, just kind of keep with that same flow. I need way more paint on here. See, this one is real, real subtle because it's got a lot of Christmas green already in it. But we can come back in here with that dark green as well. And we're gonna come back in here with white. So by the time we get done, we're really dry brushing multiple colors over this tree to try to just give it that real tree effect. You know, having the branches kind of coming off. So I kind of almost start over here and then work my way out in more of a curved kind of line up and down. So I, now I'm gonna grab a little bit of that darker green and I'm really not trying to blend it even though it can happen because it's still really wet. I'm kind of trying to come in and go in between where I already have some of that uh, Christmas green mixed with the dark green and kind of fill it in. I want it to look like layers of, of paint on here. So that way, it, to me, it just looks a little bit more realistic. Let's see. Yeah, be careful too not to get it on your buffalo plaid. That's kind of easy to do. Okay, let's see. I think I like that right now. I like that look. Okay. You could always, guys, you could always put more on there, make it a little bit darker, but I'm sticking with kind of a lighter, you know, a lighter tone on here. Um, I'm also going to come in here with a little bit of white on the tree and give it a little bit more definition, but that's all I've done so far um, to achieve the tree look on here. Now I am gonna go ahead and dry it a little bit because I wanna put the white on here and then I wanna go ahead and get my bulbs painted. The reason I'm drying it before doing the white is I'm not trying to blend these colors together. I want this to be dry and then I wanna come in and put a little bit of white on top, but I'm not, I do not wanna mix colors. Um, to me on the, the different shades of green, it's okay to blend a little bit. So that's why I went ahead and did both colors together. Uh, but if I'm switching to a different color family, I'd rather everything underneath it be dry. Y'all, this one is also going to have to be done in multiple parts. Um, 
because my blank that I sell already has the words etched in. The bigger piece um, that I paint to sell myself does not have the words etched in. And so I have to do, I actually do that with a Mylar stencil. So in order to do a stencil, everything has to be completely bone dry. So you and I today are going to, we're gonna finish out the tree, we're gonna outline everything, and then tomorrow, once it's dry, I'll hop back on and we'll do all of our white. So we'll do our, our uh, stencil and we'll do our, what's it called? Highlights, couldn't think of the word. Hey Debbie, Annika, hi, good to see you. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, I feel like Maybe not, but Catherine, good to see you. Uh, Deborah says, hey, Ashley, great to see you painting. Y'all, I know y'all haven't seen me in like, what, a month? It's been a while. It's really been a while. Um, I'm so sorry, y'all. It's been, it's been crazy. It's uh, the start of our busy season over here. And as a lot of you guys know, I, I'm kind of more of a one-woman show. Um, I have a guy who comes and cuts for me a couple of days a week. But other than that, it's kind of just me. So between painting and bookkeeping and running the machine and building files and you know being a, a mom and everything that I have to do it's kind of it all falls on me so if you guys don't see me for a while it's honestly just because I'm insanely busy but I know I have some lives coming up here um, next month uh, we have a couple of Christmas blanks coming out so I know I'll be live I think two or three times next month so, hey, Carla. Yeah, it's okay. Y'all, This we're just doing a little buffalo plaid. Uh, you can always catch it on replay. Hey, Debbie from Southern Ohio. Love your videos. So helpful. Thank you, Debbie. All right, y'all. I'm using another two-inch chip brush. If y'all can't tell, I kind of like accidentally leave these in the water way too long, and that's why they're rusted. You can still use them. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to dip the tip of it in water just right here, right along the bottom, maybe a quarter inch. Just a little bit. Okay. Shake the excess off. Get a little bit of white. Sometimes I also come over here on my table and, and just kind of make sure that it's not too watery. Now, whenever I'm doing this, instead of using the big width of the brush, I'm actually turning it sideways and kind of trying to come in with a little bit of a thinner line. So again, I'm really sticking with those same motions. You want your branches to kind of be flowing outward just like they would in a Christmas tree. I don't have that ring light on, so I, I don't have it on because at first off, it just kind of sometimes makes it look really funky, but then my old eyes over here aren't seeing so great. I got some new glasses coming in next week and they can't come fast enough. All right, just a little bit. You guys, I've already done the, uh, the same truck tutorial, but just plain, not buffalo plaid. And I did paint the tree completely different. This is a different way of painting the tree. So even though you guys have seen me paint this pattern, you're really seeing a totally different version than what I've showed you before. So let's see, it's Onika. Oh, Onika, I love that. Thank you for correcting me. I hope I got it right the second time. So Phaedra says that uh, we are just grateful that y'all are able to do any videos during this time of year. Yes, Phaedra, thank you so much, hon. You know, uh, it's just, uh, for us, the last three months of the year, four months of the year, it's just nuts, you know? It's just kind of part of the business. All right, y'all, before I forget, because the window right here, our, our little kind of, I don't know if you call it a window. No, it's not a windshield, it's the side window. Um, because I'm gonna do a white stencil on here, I wanted to add a little bit to the white window or else you wouldn't be able to see it with the, um, once I get that stencil on here. So I'm trying to remember what I did. I want to say I took, this is regular gray, just a little bit of regular gray. Okay. And then I took a little bit of a, this is a, a mixture between regular gray and black. So it's just a little bit shade darker. If you don't have gray, you guys can always mix it white and black. You know, you can make it yourself. But I kind of got two different tones of gray. I want y'all to, I know that lighting's kind of off. So two different tones. And ah, I just squirted this out and I felt it come on my face. Squirt all over my face, y'all. Ah, paint. Okay, I'm gonna take my shader. This is a number 16 uh, Royal Flat Brush. Uh, I call it a shader. Uh, it's, it's completely dry. I'm just dipping it, guys and a little bit of that gray on the corner. 
And I'm going to dip the opposite side and a little bit of that kind of shading gray. And now what I'm doing, honestly, is I'm going, let me turn it to you, see if I can, I need to move some of this stuff. This piece is so big. Let's see if I can make it so y'all could see it a little bit better. I'm kind of going from the bottom up here, so at a diagonal, and just kind of creating some, a little bit more of a, a depth dimension to that window. It's almost like dry brushing as well. Uh just with your shader. I do not want this to be thick. I want it to be super, super light. I wanna be able to still see that white underneath. The only reason again why I'm doing this is because of my stencil that's gonna come over top of this. You won't be able to read the Merry Christmas if I left this window plain stark white. So just adding a little bit of color that still kinda of looks natural. And y'all could see all my boo-boos over here. Oops, I'll cover that up. Let me see if y'all can see that. That lighting is, oh, whoa, whoa, let's see. How do I get that lighting to fix? It showed up for a second. Let me see, there we go. So a little bit of light gray and uh, then take your light gray and just mix maybe one black a drop or one black one drop of black y'all i cannot talk and it'll kind of be able to give you that that dimension to that window so that now when you do your white on there i know you can't see it when it's laid down it's kind of weird uh but then when you do your white on there it'll come out and really pop those letters are really pop on top of that gray so uh let's see Hey, Melissa, how are you, hon? Nice sweatshirt. Why are you dressed like you should be in Indiana? Okay, we're going to Indiana no, next week. This is my mother-in-law asking me this. Uh, that's because it's cold here. It's like 60 degrees in my workshop, y'all. And if you're sitting outside in a, in a cold workshop all day, then yes, you get cold. My toes are cold and my fingers are cold. So, you know, I have like multiple t-shirts on under here and really thick socks. And I feel like I'm back in Colorado. We lived in Colorado for a couple of years. And uh, yeah, I had to dress in layers. So Colorado kind of taught me how to get through the, the cool weather. Just put on layers and you can take your layers off throughout the day type thing. Okay, guys, I am going to, I think we're going to go ahead and outline the truck. And then I'll come in with the red. Only because I got to put that red on really thick to cover that green. And um, if I do that right now before I outline, you guys will... Um, You'll see it, that red kind of getting carried into the black, and I don't want to do that, okay? Now, on my tree, I love the look of the tree like this. I love the kind of wispy branches. So I didn't want to do a thick outline around the outside. I kind of just did really light, wispy lines. But before I get ahead of myself, I'm gonna pull this over, and I'm gonna start right here in this window and outline the window because it's in the middle and I don't want uh, my hands kind of dragging in uh, this paint on the outside when I'm trying to do something on the inside. So let me do this first. Get this filled in. Y'all, I know some of you guys have probably just popped on recently. Um, let me just give you guys a rundown. Today we are just doing the I'm gonna live, yeah. Oh, no. no, it's okay. How was school? Good. I love you. Uh, I'll be in in just a little bit, okay? Okay. Sorry, y'all. My little one just got home. Uh, what was I saying? Okay, uh, so this truck is the, the regular Merry Christmas truck. I do have, we sell the blank at yardarest.com. Um, the version that you guys see me doing is larger than the blank, a lot larger than the blank. Um, this is the size that I paint to sell. So it just happens to be what I have on hand. So that's what you guys are seeing me use. Um, but other than that, this is something everybody out there can achieve. It's not a difficult thing to do. And I really think that the um, outcome of it is just absolutely stunning. So get a little bit of black outline on here. Kind of get it. I'll get it in those, those CNC etch lines. 
make sure I don't have any other colors popping up out of there. The only reason you guys are seeing me go back over it a couple of times is some of these lines are a little bit deeper than I like them to be. And so I run my brush over them one time and it's not enough. Somebody who's doing uh, paper patterns with graphite paper, you know, you don't have them carved on there. Obviously one stroke across is nice and easy. But uh, with CNC lines, it's a little bit different. Okay, so I went ahead and just outlined that. Now, when it comes to my tree, I'm trying to get over here, there we go. I'm doing kind of a light wispy motion, okay? So I load my brush and then I offload my brush. I don't want much on here, okay? Then I'm kind of starting and just very gently allowing my brush to flow. If my, my brush is kind of picking up in some spots and you might not see it as a real thick fluid line, I'm doing that on purpose. I don't want a fluid line. I want it to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more wispy. There's so many different ways that you guys or anybody could, you know, paint a um, Christmas tree. And I just thought these doing your branches this way, I just think it's so easy to achieve. You know, beginning painters can achieve it. And I think it's just really pretty. So I don't want to cover it up with a thick, you know, stark outline. I'd rather leave it kind of easy breezy. All right. So there we go. A little bit of black. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn my truck and I'm going to go ahead and outline the perimeter. Um, you technically don't have to. I like an outline perimeter, but really if you know you didn't want to outline it, you totally didn't have to. This buffalo plaid, I think is so pretty that it doesn't always have to require, you know, a perimeter outline on it. It's really more of a personal preference, I think. Oh, I feel like I'm missing out on some comments here. Uh, let's see. Christy says, how do you clean up the boo-boos? Christy, typically, if I see them fast enough, I'll clean them up with my hand or a rag and Windex. Now, here's a big thing, though. If you've got a boo-boo on wet paint, the best thing to do is leave it, let it dry, and come back and do touch-ups. If you already have wet, you know, a glob of wet paint on top of wet paint, it's only going to smear and make kind of the issue worse. So the good thing about paint is because it's always done in layers, you know, making this yard art, it's, it's all about layers upon layers. Uh, so, you know, if, if you make a boo-boo on a layer, no worries, let it dry if you can't clean it up immediately and um, come back over it and fix it. But if you can clean it up immediately, uh, honestly, half the time, y'all, I just use my fingers and that's how y'all see my clothes get so dirty, which, this is a kind of a newer, um, not a newer, just a sweatshirt. This is my husband's old sweatshirt from college that I found in the closet and uh, wasn't too big. And I was like, oh, I can, I can wear that painting. So I kind of stole it out of our closet. Uh, so it doesn't have a lot of paint on it yet, but y'all see all those paint I usually have on my shoulders, like on my shirt underneath, all this paint I have on my shoulders. That's from cleaning up boo-boos and wiping it on my shoulders. Uh, Tracy says, I missed what color you're using. Is that blue? Uh, this is black. So the Buffalo plaid is done with black and I'm actually using a black right now. Y'all, this black, for whatever reason, the manufacturer, probably about six months ago, they changed, um, I guess, the formula on here. And so it almost looks like a dark, dark blue, black kind of color but it's not, it's black and it will dry black, though it doesn't look at, at the moment, it will. Um, it's just kind of a, I don't know, it's a funky formula. I let them know at our paint supplier, you know, that I didn't quite care for the new formula, but I don't know that they really care about my opinion, you know, so. Yeah, it's all black. I see Melissa and Debbie trying to help answer. Thank you guys so much. I feel like I've just been yada, you know, yapping my mouth over here and not really keeping up with comments. Alrighty, I really don't have much more on him for today because he is gonna have to dry before I can do white. But I think you guys will be surprised aside from the time that it takes to tape. 
this is actually a pretty fast to do uh, because it's all really done in dry brush. You're not adding shading. You're just dry brushing and outlining, honestly. Without it, oh, and base coating, of course. This line's a little thick, so I'm just trying to really make sure I get all that paint in there. Get those crevices kind of cleaned up. You guys, I'm also using that Royal Gold script liner number four, the same script liner I always use. Mine is bent because it's really worn in and that's how I like it, but they're not supposed to be bent. They're supposed to be straight, but you know, there's mine. Okay, uh, outline is done. Let me clean my brush. I'm actually gonna use the same brush to get the red on my ornament. So I'm just gonna wash it out right quick and then I'll scoot back and show you guys. Put a lid on that black before I spill it. I have to stand up. This piece is just too big. All right, there's a look so far. Buffalo plaid, all done with black. And a little bit of outline. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of red on my bulbs. And then that's gonna be it for today because I, I have to do a Mylar stencil on the Merry Christmas. And I cannot do a Mylar stencil um, until everything is completely dry. There could not be one dot of wet paint on here or it's just going to make a big old mess. So still sticking with that script liner, just kind of coming in here and following along with those edge lines. Getting a little bit of red on there. I'm really honestly putting the red on here really thick because red does not cover other colors very well, especially a green. So uh, if you do a nice thick coat, use your script liner and do a nice thick coat and uh, it should be dry red enough that you'll like the outcome. Also, by the way, y'all, I did add a couple of drops to the red. Anytime you see me using a cup, it has a little bit of water added to it. Not much, it's still really, really thick. It's not dripping like, you know, my outline colors would with that amount of water, but it does have just a few drops so that it, it flows a little bit easier for me. So I kind of set, I'm really loading that brush and pulling in a lot of paint. And then kind of um, smoothing it out. I want that paint really, really thick on here. If you struggle to do a thick layer, you might need to do two coats on these little bulbs. On the blank bulbs, you guys don't have the cutout for lights. Um, like I said earlier, this is the full size version that I sell, I paint and sell. And so mine has lights already, um, holes for lights cut out. But the regular blank version just has little circles for, um, for uh, bulbs. I think I need to also clarify that. Sorry about that. I don't think I've mentioned that throughout this video yet. So, alrighty. One more. And ta-da. Put my brush back in my water. Let me move my chair out of the way. Try to show this to y'all. Better look. All right, y'all. That's what I have so far. Trying to get that window to come up in here, but that lighting, let's see. Do, do, do. That window is gray, but I can't get the lighting to do the right thing and show you the gray. Uh, it's coming off white, but it's gray. I'll take a picture of this too and I can, I can uh, upload it for you guys. Now, only thing I need left to do is add white, but again, because I have to do the white with a stencil, it has to be completely dry. So I cannot do the white tonight. I will come back live. Uh, probably won't be tonight uh, because I painted this thing early this morning and even at two o'clock, I still had to pull out a blow dryer to uh, get it to dry enough so that I could go live with it. So it'll probably be in the morning. We'll add our Merry Christmas uh, stencil and we'll also add a little bit of highlights and this guy's done. So just as a recap, I started with two coats of red as my base. 
I then came on and did uh, Christmas green as the base on the truck, white as the base on my uh, hubcaps of my wheels, on the window, and on my headlight. I did, uh, I used two inch painter's tape on my stripes. It's Amazon's choice, Amazon, whatever their brand is. And um, I used black on all of my stripes. And then I came in here and I used a little bit of Christmas green and dark green mixed together and also dark green to kind of create the green tones in my tree as a dry brush. And then I came over top of that dry brush with a little bit of white. And then I added just plain red to my bulbs. Y'all, this drives me nuts how this gray over here on this window is not coming through. Why is that? There we go. Oh, where'd it go? It was gray there for just one second and then it stopped being gray. There we go. So I also did a little bit of light gray or actually gray and uh, kind of like a gray black mixture. I don't know how to get y'all to see that better. The lighting is weird. It's really driving me nuts. Uh, but yeah, that's what we've done so far. So that's part one. I'll come back on tomorrow. We'll do part two. Hey, Lauren, Wanda, Watt, Robert, uh, Kitty, good to see you guys. So sorry, y'all. If I missed any questions over, over this, because I feel like I've just spent a lot of time talking and not as much reading on comments, um, I'll come back and answer those for you guys. But thank y'all so much for joining me. Look for me tomorrow, probably in the morning, and we will finish out the plaid truck, and I'll get some uh, photos posted for you guys. Until then, y'all, uh, if y'all have questions, drop them in the comments, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And otherwise, I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thank y'all for being here.